What's up guys and welcome back to a new episode where we will be talking about static properties and methods in PHP. A static property can be seen as a property that can be accessed via the class directly and not via an instance. As you probably might wonder why this is helpful, well sometimes it actually is because we can access methods and properties in the context of a class rather than an object. Let's start off by creating a class called user. Well, I actually got it, so you need to create it now. And what we want to add are two properties. The first one is a public space static called next ID, and the value is equal to zero. And the second property that I want to create is a public variable my ID. When you declare a normal property like we did with our my ID, well, let me actually zoom in a little bit. With our my ID, there could be a different value of the property you create of that class. And what I mean with that is that, well, if we go outside of our class and we create an instance of a new object called user is equal to new user, and we set user pointer my ID equal to 10. Now let's echo out user my ID. Save it, refresh the browser, and 10 is printed out. And this is how we used to do it because we can change the value of my ID every single time. But for a static property, there is one copy of that variable for the entire class. And this is the main difference from the visibility of that specific variable. A public static property, next ID, exists once per class and can be accessed from anywhere. Well, let's go right below our echo and let's echo out our static property. And this could be done by saying, well, the class where we want to look into called user, followed by a double column. And while using a double column means that we're basically entering the static properties and methods directly than rather creating an instance, just like we did with our my ID. After the double colon, we need to add the name of the property that we want to access. So let's say dollar sign next ID. As you can see, there are a couple differences. And the biggest difference is that the dollar sign is right in front of the property rather than the instance of the class. So let's comment out the instances because we don't need it. And let's add an echo right in front of user. So let's save it, refresh the browser, and zero is printed out on the screen. And that's our static property called next ID. If you try to access a property that is not static, so let's say my ID, well, let's replace next ID with my ID. Let's save it, refresh the browser, and you can see that this won't work because we're getting an error message since it's not possible to enter the static property directly. And what we're doing right here could also be done with methods. So let's go back to the code editor and right below our properties, let's create a public space static space function called print ID. We want to pass in one param called variable ID. And inside the ID, we want to return variable ID. Now, if we go to well, the location where we're echoing out our user double colon my ID, we could actually change my ID and we need to get rid of the dollar sign because we want to enter a method instead of a property. We need to write down the method name called print ID, set of parentheses. And inside the parentheses, let's just pass an ID of 20. Let's save it. Refresh the browser and 20 is printed out on the screen. What we're doing right here is accessing properties and methods outside of the class. If we want to enter a property inside the class, if you do remember, we use the keyword called this, right? Now, when you want to enter a static property inside the class itself, we use a keyword called self rather than this. So let's remove the param inside our method and let's return a piece of text. So let's say return, double colon, semicolon, and user ID is equal to, let's concatenate, followed by the keyword self, and be aware that we don't need to add a dollar sign in front of this. 
double colon, property called next ID. And obviously, if you want to enter your properties inside the class itself, we could set the access modifiers to private, save it. Well, we need to get rid of our 20 inside the parentheses of print ID, save it, refresh the browser, and you can see that the user ID is equal to zero. And if you're trying to enter a non-static property, so my ID, let's change next ID to my ID, save it, refresh the browser, and the output will be in fatal error because our my ID is not a static property. You might wonder when to use instantiated or static properties and methods, and the simplest way to consider things might be to use an instantiated class where each object has its own data. In our example, it did not because, well, let me go back to the code editor. We only have an ID. But let's say that you have a class user with properties like username, last name, age, and so on. I do recommend you to use an instantiated class because you can change up the value every single time. I recommend you to use a static class when it's just a tool that works on other stuff. This was it for the static properties and methods episode. And in the next episode, I want to talk about abstract properties and methods. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.